in the history of the show. And secondly, I have to say, regardless of what happens outside of the show and whatever opinions are expressed, I am reaffirming my support for the rights of the LGBT community. I stand here to tell you more strongly than ever that I affirm my support for the LGBT community. And I believe that all of us, no matter who we are, we all have a right to live and love as we see it. It's simple, common, human decency. Amen. Can you hold this, please? Don't wear it. Anyway, as a young girl growing up in the suburbs of Chicago, I learned how important this lesson is that everyone has a right to be treated equally, no matter who they are. And I learned this at a very young age. My parents taught me by example, simply because I couldn't hear, no one had the right to treat me as handicapped. In the Madden household, it was all about love and respect and a lot of fun stuff. In fact, life in our household was so cool that a reporter once described my growing up as very much like one long episode of The Brady Bunch. And he was right. Because for me, every day on my street was all about being a sunshine day and keep on, keep on, keep on moving, just like they say on the show, on The Brady Bunch. Of the most popular girl in town that only my parents could have instilled in me. I imagined myself as the beautiful Marsha Brady, who just happened to be deaf, skating down the street with long, luxurious hair and hearing aids saying hi to people whether they knew me or not. <laughs> One thing is for sure that when you were a man, you were sure to have an answer for anyone who dared to get in your way. When kids made fun of my hearing aids, my dad told me to tell them they're not hearing aids. Don't stress out. Just tell them that they're big globs of bubblegum. If you want some. <laughs> and when and when kids made fun of my speech, my brothers rose to my defense and told them, oh no, she doesn't speak funny. She has a mysterious accent because her parents are foreign spies. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't the only one who learned to stand up despite what people thought was different. When my brother Mark told my parents that he was gay, my parents said that that was okay as long as he settled down with a nice doctor, of course. <laughs> I mean, of course they would say that. They're Jews, would you expect anything less? <laughs> well, my brother didn't disappoint. Today, he and his partner Jay, the doctor, a professor of gastroenterology, no less, despite being deaf, only to marry a Catholic police officer. <laughs> Though the Madeline Fortitude got me through my childhood, I must admit that there were times when I almost, at 
admitted defeat. The day after I won the Academy Award, noted Hollywood columnist Rex Reed expressed that my win on Oscar night was a result of a pity vote. And he questioned whether I even deserved the Oscar because as he stated, I was just a deaf woman playing a deaf role. Even New York Magazine had to join in and express their doubts that I would never work in Hollywood simply because I was deaf. I may have been the first person who was deaf ever to win an Academy Award for Best Actress, yet people like Greg Sree and New York Magazine were already proclaiming my career DOA, deaf on arrival. <laughs> I was ready to throw in the towel. with my actor boyfriend, William Hurt, which went from passionate to troubled to eventually abusive, things looked very bleak. But I had two things going for me. One was my newfound sobriety. I got sober the week before I won the Golden Globe. 